Today on Basic Bites, I'm going to show you several Easter eggs that I found buried within the code of the Epix Programmer's Basic Toolkit, which I personally have never seen documented anywhere before. These Easter eggs were obviously crafted by at least a couple of the developers whose names appear on screen right now, and fair warning, there's a bit of profanity incoming. Greetings, it's JC at Basic Bytes, and today's video is about several Easter eggs that I found hidden within the code of Epix Toolkit Basic, otherwise known as the Epix Programmer's Basic Toolkit. This package will inevitably be appearing in future videos on Basic Bytes, so I won't give it too much introduction here, except to say that it is one of my favorite program development environments, especially because it includes a facility to make distribution disks of your code that will work on any Commodore 64. As it turns out, the developers included several commands which, with good reason, were not mentioned anywhere within the official manual. To take a closer look at these, we will need to dig into the code of the Epix Basic Toolkit itself, and to accomplish that, we will drop into the machine language monitor of the Final Cartridge 3. Don't program without it. This is a text readout of the Commodore 64's memory from hex location A09E through A19D. This portion of memory is actually part of the built-in basic ROM, but we are just stopping here for a moment so that I can add a bit of context to what you're about to see when we look inside the Epix Basic Toolkit. Despite the seemingly weird capitalizations, as your eyes scan over this block of text, you're probably already noticing quite a few familiar basic commands, even at the beginning of the first line, such as end, for, and next. As you're probably aware, when you enter a basic program into the Commodore 64, basic commands get crunched down to a single byte token in memory, and then get uncrunched back into text form when you list your program back. Of course, in order to be able to uncrunch the tokens back to text, the text of each command has to exist in the Commodore 64's memory somewhere, and this table does in fact include the text of every single basic version 2 command. The weird capitalization is actually a trick to save memory. The Commodore 64 only needs to know where to find the start of each string, and when it finds a shifted letter, it knows it has come to the end. If you look at the code for just about any basic extension or toolkit, you will probably find a table of text very similar to this one, which is meant to pick up where this one leaves off. If you're able to find it, it must by nature contain all of the additional commands in the toolkit, and is a great way to discover if there are any that are hidden or otherwise undocumented. So this is the text table of commands that are included with the Epix Programmer's Basic Toolkit. There are quite a few of them, and it starts out very reasonable, but as you work your way down the list, you find a full-on F-bomb just sitting there. And just to confirm at this point, this isn't somebody's hacked version of the toolkit. I own the full retail boxed version, and Yes, this is actually in the code. And in some ways, I think I have to hand it to these guys, because anybody that has written a piece of software like this has certainly dropped plenty of F-bombs, but it's a whole other level to actually drop one in your code. But, of course, they don't stop there, because as we move our way down the command list, we work our way to a second profanity and then to a third profanity. And speaking of these guys, as we move past those, it turns out that the developers made themselves into commands, because then we find Ken Rose, who appeared on the title screen, and Jack Thornton, who appeared on the title screen. 
But quite interestingly, there's a third name which does not appear on the title screen, and that is Howard Bowen, who clearly had some instrumental part to play in the development of this software, but did not get title screen credit. But this gets better, because this isn't just some random label that's inserted somewhere in the code. This is the table of commands, which means that if we run any of these commands, they should do something. So let's find out what. I've restarted Epic's Toolkit Basic, and because I know it's the one you're all waiting for, I'm just going to go ahead and F-bomb my computer. Okay, fine. Well, computer, you're not getting your way today because we still have two more to go. Second hidden command. Well, I think we can all pretty much see what direction this is going in, but for completeness... Yep, no surprises there. Reflecting upon this, I actually don't know if it's completely juvenile, or maybe a little bit brilliant, because as long as computers have existed in schools, we all know there's that junior high school kid who's going to walk into the programming lab and type this kind of thing into the terminal. And at the moment, I'm just envisioning exactly what the reaction would be if the computer had gone ahead and told off the kid for doing it. But we'll let that one sit for now, because we have three more Easter eggs to go. So what does the computer tell us if we type in the programmer's names then? Beginning with... Ken Rose. Somehow, I am not surprised. What about... Jack Thornton? Yep, that figures. Once again, I think we can all see exactly where this is going, but third and final, we have the uh, heretofore uncredited Howard Bowen. No surprises there either. <laughs> Way to go, guys. Way to go. Given that Howard Bowen received the short end of the stick by not receiving a title screen credit, let's put him back up here right now. At this point, you may be wondering, why do we have a command for someone who isn't even mentioned here, but none for Ron Gilbert or Tom McFarlane? A little piece of software history, the first two gentlemen actually wrote the predecessor product to this, which was called Graphics Basic and sold by Hessware in the earlier part of the 1980s. At some point, Epix took possession of the code for Ron Gilbert and Tom McFarlane's Graphics Basic, and that's when Jack Thornton and Ken Rose, and we discover now Howard Bowen as well, extended and expanded it into the Epix Programmer's Basic Toolkit. The Easter eggs that we've seen today were certainly programmed at Epix, and knowing that, I have two questions for all those of you who are watching this video. Firstly, I'm just curious if you had been one of the managers at Epix in 1985 and had gotten wind of these Easter eggs, would you have allowed them to ship? Programmers inserting hidden messages into code was certainly a thing by this point in time, as we've also seen it at Commodore in the Commodore 128 ROMs, for example. However, I think we can all agree that the insertions in this particular product were a little bit brave. On the side of the programmers, it could be argued that the computer never outputs any profanity to the user, it simply responds to such by saying, don't do that. On the other hand, said profanity is in no way obscured within the code. In fact, it has to exist there in plain text in order for the computer to respond to the user in the manner that it does. So there is a bit of a line of professionalism being walked here. My other question is, 
Have you ever seen these Easter eggs documented anywhere before whatsoever? And if you have, please leave me a link in the comments to where they have been announced previously. On one hand, I find it very hard to believe that I'm the first person to discover this in a software package which was released by a major software house and is now more than 35 years old. On the other hand, the internet loves to publish Easter eggs, and despite doing quite a bit of searching before making this video, I could not find any sign of this anywhere. At the very least, it means that there are plenty of people out there like myself who up until now were completely unaware of the F-bombs and other Easter eggs in Epic's Toolkit Basic. So, if you found this video interesting or entertaining, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. Especially if you'd like to see more content doing programming or otherwise examining code on the channel in the future. Thank you for watching.